good afternoon students today i would uh, like to discuss with you the passing away of bapu it is in your class 10 syllabus you know and it is written by noyantara shegal the passing away of bapu it's a very uh, famous text and no uh, bapu refers to mahatma gandhi ji the apostle of non violence and without whom our indian uh, freedom struggle would remain incomplete and our indian freedom struggle would not get success in that sense you know noyantara shegal's uh, noyantara shegal's composition the passing away of bapu has been included in our syllabus because bapu i mean our own beloved and our respected mahatma gandhi ji our father of nation is still relevant in india's socio political life therefore the passing away of bapu it has also some sort of relevance some sort of signification you know gandhi ji was assassinated he was killed and uh, his assassination his killing and his passing away his demise you know the great demise of mahatma gandhi ji uh, still shakes us actually it shook once upon a time not only india rather the entire world in general because gandhi ji is relevant uh, for all the people who are toiling for all the people who are laboring for all the people who are struggling and who are protesting against all sorts of oppressions against all sorts of tortures and persecutions in a non violent fashion actually gandhi ji is still relevant in all of them's life therefore the passing away of bapu is a very preponderous text because it has a mighty message to convey it has a very mighty message to convey so noyantara shegal speech the passing away of bapu is included in our syllabus i would like to discuss with you my feelings about uh, this great demise okay uh, noyantara shegal you know is one of the first female indian writers as written uh, you can uh, see it in your textbook it is written here in english to receive wide recognition her fiction deals with india's response to the crisis brought about by political changes she won the sahitya academy you know sahitya academy award is the highest award the highest literary award the most prestigious award in india sahitya academy she won sahitya academy for her novel reach like us the passing away of bapu is discussed here today at first a lucid reading I was having tea at home on the evening of 30th Jan 1948 when I was called to Bidla house by an urgent telephone Gandhi ji had been shot on his way to a prayer meeting I was numb with shock as I got into the car at the Bidla house Gandhi ji's relatives and followers had gathered around his body there was silence in the room as Gandhi ji breathed his last words of Bapu ji's death had spread through Delhi like a flame fanned by wind sad groups of men and women had collected around birla house out of every window one could see a brown blur of faces they did not make a sound there was there was an unnatural silence it was as if time stood still for those few minutes so let's explain i was having tea at home uh, on the evening of 30th january 1948 so noyantara shegal she was actually spending a leisurely hour she was taking tea and just at that time she got a news and the news was something like a uh, bolt from the blue it's an english idiom you know bolt from the blue uh, a most unexpected news a most unexpected bad news that came and it really shook noyantara shegal from within because it was a most shocking news what happened gandhi ji our father of nation gandhi ji was assassinated actually she was he was going to join some prayer he was going to join some prayer meeting and on his way he was shot dead he was shot dead bullets pierced into his body and he was assassinated gandhi ji had been shot on his way to a prayer meeting i have already uh, told you i was numb with shock as i got into the car no sooner no sooner did she got did she get the news then she got into the car to reach the place where gandhi ji's body was uh, there actually he went there and at that time she was numb with shock it was a she was numb with shock because she could she was almost mentally paralyzed not physically but mentally paralyzed she couldn't believe what happened it was such a shocking news it was such an unbelievable news that she could not believe but she believed ultimately but uh, at first initially at the outset 
she couldn't believe rather she was numb with shock as if it was a mental paralysis that she started to suffer from at the bidla house gandhi's relatives and followers had gathered round his body gandhi's relatives and followers gathered round his body because he was mohandas karmachand gandhi and he was uh, not an ordinary person rather he was an extraordinary personality he was a world famous personality and he was most respected and most beloved one of the most respected and one of the most beloved leaders of didan india so naturally when gandhi ji was shot dead people poured in people poured in and they mustered strong and people thronged around the place where gandhi ji's body was kept the relatives and the followers the relatives and the followers in plethora came there was silence in the room as gandhi ji breathed his last there was silence in the room there was no chaos there was no confusion and there was no pandemonium it was total silence people uh, maintained silence people maintained silence all by themselves they were not given an instruction to keep silent silent rather they maintained silence on their own they did not have to get any instruction from some higher authority no the matter is not that rather they were so much shocked and the matter shook uh to the inner core of their heart so much so deeply that they really became silent out of their grief out of their sorrow they really became silent words of bapuji's death had spread through delhi like a flame fanned by wind sad groups of men and women had collected around bidla house it's quite normal and it's quite natural whenever such a great demise took place this news spread like flame fanned by wind outstanding imagery the the news spread in a more in a, i mean in a fastest fashion the news spread all around delhi all over the delhi each and every corner of delhi every nook and corner of delhi came to know of the fact that gandhi ji gandhi ji has died gandhi ji was no more sad groups of men and women actually people became very sad people became full of sorrow and they started to come i have already told you out of every window one could see a brown blur of faces they did not make a sound there was an unnatural silence it was as if time stood still for those few minutes there was an unnatural silence i have already told you there was an unnatural silence it happens it may happen as a natural reaction as a natural response to a grief totally unexpected sometimes it happens that people really lose their words to express their views and their mentality at the time that happens and they become totally speechless literally speechless literally speechless they didn't have any anything to speak they didn't have anything to uh talk over okay that happened and they became really silent and what happened as if time stood still time stood still. you know time is an ever flowing process time never becomes still but it's a fallacy though it's a fallacy sometimes this feeling happens that as if time stood still the time becomes stagnant time never time gets stagnant never time never gets stagnant but sometimes it happens that the time becomes stagnant time loses loses its flow it happened it seemed though didn't it didn't happen rather it seemed the people were too stunned to speak in the beginning later they clamored wildly shouting and crying they jostled one another in a stampede to break into the house they calmed a little when it was announced that they would be allowed to see gandhi ji before his funeral so it happened this is the second form of reaction the very first the very pri- primary form of reaction is silence the second form or the secondary form of reaction is clamor clamor follows silence at first there is silence then comes clamor clamor means noise clamor means din and bustle clamor means a, some sort of chaotic situation it must happen because gandhi ji was a public figure gandhi ji was the father of nation he was an international figure so when gandhi ji was assassinated in a most brutal fashion possible when gandhi ji was assassinated so naturally at first the news became uh, news seemed to be un, uh, i mean unbelievable at first but when people got sense that it's it's a fact it's a reality gandhi ji has already died gandhi ji is no more this is not uh, i mean this is not a false fact rather it's a true fact when people come to know when people start believing the matter 
at just just at that time they start clamoring they start clamoring because their emotions are totally confused they are totally confused from within they could not say they could not express what they really uh, what they were really thinking at that at that time rather uh, they were clamoring they were clamoring and it was you know an outburst of sorrow it was an outburst of anger it was an outburst of emotion okay all these things happened when they had they got back their sense they recollected their sense at first people were stunned they did not uh, say anything but when that stunning situation was a bit over then clamor dawns upon and then they wanted to they wanted to enter into bidla house they wanted to enter into bidla house because they all of them wanted to have a last sight of gandhi ji of their beloved leader they wanted to have their last sight but when this commitment was done uh, by the authority that each and everybody will get the opportunity to see gandhi ji for the last time before huge funeral before his funeral funeral means you know, the last rites the final rites before uh, i mean before burning gandhi ji's dead body uh, everybody will get the chance everybody will get the opportunity of seeing or paying their last tribute their last homage to gandhi ji when they got the commitment from the authority they were a bit quiet when one is faced with the shock of a loved one's death one whimpers what will become of me now that he has left me this was surely the question uppermost in the mind of the mourning people of the mourning people people were mourning all of them were lamenting they were crying because they were full of sorrow full of grief and when they were lamenting when when they were full of sorrow the first question that came uppermost in their mind what will happen to them or what would happen to them actually whenever some we lose our beloved ones from our own personal life this question comes to our mind what will happen in his or in her absence what will happen in his or in her absence and this question came to the mind of the people of that time though there was no biological connection between gandhi ji and all those people in spite of that all of them felt gandhi ji to be their own uh, family member in that sense because gandhi ji was the father of nation that means to millions he was really a father figure so when gandhi ji breathed his last this question became uppermost this question came to their mind that what would happen because gandhi ji is no more what would happen who will take the charge of i mean if not the pol if not the administrative charge rather who will guide india to its true destination who that was the first question this was surely the question uppermost in the mind of the morning people they looked like lost children they looked like lost children lost children you know when uh, the children are little ones at the, at that time sometimes uh, they they get lost in some huge gathering suppose they go to some fair and they get lost and naturally they start crying and they feel helpless that sort of helpless situation that sort of helpless countenance i mean facial expression was prevalent on the faces of all those people who were present there because all of them or maximum of them looked like lost children because they lost their father they lost their father they lost the protecting umbrella uh, that protects them from the scorching heat they lost their protecting umbrella you know father is our protecting umbrella and gandhi ji was the protecting umbrella for not only a individual not only an individual person rather for the entire country in general it was the question in many of our hearts as we sat still shocked and unbelieving we listened to the broadcast telling the people of india that their bapu was no more still people could not reconcile between the fact that gandhi ji was no more and their uh, imagination that gandhi ji is everlasting gandhi ji is ever living actually they could not reconcile they could not reconcile with their mind and the reality there was a gap between what they believe and what the fact really is there, there is a gap in between they could not reconcile and it was an irreconcilable in, in i mean irreconcilable gap uh, at the initial stage so therefore there was some sort of emotional confusion uh, emotional confusion was it wasn't uh, i mean if, if not a confusion it's an emotional storm 
it was an emotional storm that took place in the hearts of the people who were there uh, beside the dead body of Gandhiji and they were silent somebody was clamoring or people were clamoring too but still there were some people who were silent and they were silently listening to the broadcast they were listening to the broadcast broadcast even the message that was conveyed by the radio uh, that Gandhiji their beloved leader Gandhiji was no more so it was an historical incident it's a historical and it's a black day in our country it's a black day because we lost the apostle of non-violence actually it's a very new concept in that sense uh, protest in a non-violent fashion not in a violent fashion rather in a non-violent fashion it's a highly relevant way of protesting which is still relevant because there are still oppression the world is not free from oppression is not free of all sorts of uh, you know treacheries oppressions humiliations uh, atrocities these things are still there and i think these things will be and so long these things uh, will be in our country not only in our country rather in the entire world in general gandhi's philosophy gandhi's doctrine gandhi's teachings and gandhi's life and gandhi's assassination will be relevant will be relevant and will ever be relevant.